It is Graham here living the dream in July 2022 at the Sandals Montego Bay. Guys, this is going to be the very, very last episode in our Moby 70 Nights in the Making adventure. Tonight we said goodbye to our awesome friends Michael and Donna who are on the evening Virgin Atlantic service back to London Heathrow. You can see from the video title this is our full motion picture. It's where I take all of the constituent parts of our vacation diary and I stitch them together into one long feature length movie. I do it for Donna and Michael. For some reason those guys love these full motion pictures. I'm going to be quite honest with you guys, I've actually never watched one of my full motion videos in the past. I tend to just check that the various constituent parts stitch together okay and then I render it all and send it up to YouTube. So I don't watch them but I do them for Michael and Donna who absolutely love them for some strange reason. So guys if you've watched all of the various parts of our Moby 70 Nights in the Making Adventure you'll probably want to switch off now and watch something else on YouTube. So here goes guys with Montego Bay 70 Nights in the Making, the full motion picture. Wednesday and day one of our Moby 70 Nights in the Making adventure. You joined Fiona and I on board a Virgin Atlantic Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner from London Heathrow to Montego Bay, of course. And I did produce a full trip report for this flight. You just need to go back to video number 200. And you can follow Fiona and I as we navigate Heathrow in the chaos of July 2022 through to our travel experience in the Virgin Atlantic premium economy cabin. And if you're wondering where our awesome friends Michael and Donna are, they travelled out three days earlier on Sunday and our original booking for Moby 70 Nights in the Making meant that we should have been travelling with them on that very flight. However, our eldest son Matthew dropped his graduation at Aberdeen University honours at rather short notice, meaning we had to make some changes to our travel arrangements. And back on the Virgin Dreamliner, Fiona and I were preparing to land at Montego Bay, where Michael and Donna promised very cold and alcoholic drinks would be waiting for us as soon as we got to the resort. And as we crossed the south coast of Cuba, less than 200 miles of the Caribbean Sea separated us from Jamaica. And Michael and Donna did manage to catch our aircraft in the distance landing from their lounger on the beach. However, I was disappointed they weren't off by now fetching our drinks. I guess I suppose it is July 2022 and you just can't get the staff these days. Well, a very warm welcome to Sangster International Airport, Montego Bay, where the local time is six minutes past four in the afternoon. And as we pulled up at the gate, Fiona and I prepared to get Moby 70 nights in the making underway. And for those of you wondering why we've called this series Moby 70 Nights in the Making, well it's very simple. Well it all stems from the Sandals loyalty program because after you have amounted 70 paid nights at any Sandals resort you get one week free. 
and Fiona and I achieved our 70 paid nights when we visited the Sandals Grand Antigua in October 2021. And of course our Antigua 21 adventure is fully documented here on YouTube. Just go back to October 21. If you wish to follow Fiona, Donna, Michael and I as we enjoy our autumn break at the fantastic resort that is of course Sandals Grand Antigua. Right back to Sangster International Airport at Montego Bay. There were absolutely no lines or queues at immigration and our priority tagged bags. Another benefit of travelling on board Virgin in premium economy arrived at the carousel in only a few minutes. This of course was in stark contrast to all of the problems and challenges that airports were seeing back in the United Kingdom. And here at Montego Bay International Airport, Sandals even have an arrivals lounge, which is something we've only experienced before at St Lucia. You do have access to some drinks here in the lounge, including one of the Sandals signature arrival cocktails. But Fiona and I were only in the lounge for about five or six minutes before before we're being whisked off to our transport to the resort. When you are transferring between the airport and the resort, there are two modes of transport. There is a free bus service transfer, which is included in your sandals all-inclusive package. Or for an additional charge, you can travel in luxury on board the Sandals BMW 7 Series. And you guessed right, guys, because I've been living in Scotland far too many years. 25 to be precise this very year. So Fiona and I were travelling between the airport and the resort on board the free bus. And if you go back to video 201, you can follow Fiona and I as we make the short transfer between the airport and the Sandals Montego Bay. The Sandals Montego Bay Resort is just the other side of the runway from the Montego Bay International Airport Terminal. And when we visited in July 2022, there was a lot of construction work underway as the airport authorities extended the runway in a bid to attract more long haul airlines. It was a really short commute and we were soon arriving at the Sandals Montego Bay. I think Fiona could already taste that first cocktail and I certainly was looking forward to my first red stripe. And it was about here Fiona spotted Michael and Donna waiting for us. The big question of course being did they procure those cold drinks? And yes they did. Well done Donna and Michael. We were then led off to the Club Sandals Lounge to check in. The process only took about 10 minutes and we were soon en route to our room, which for the first 11 nights would be room 607. And of course I have done a full resort and room tour from the Sandals Montego Bay. You just have to go back to video number 202 where I take you on an end-to-end -end tour of this resort, including four of the rooms we stayed in during our 14 nights. Anyway, back to our arrival at the Sandals Montego Bay we're off to room 607. We approached our room on the second floor of this Caribbean beach view block. We could see that our cases had even beaten us to the room. Well done sandals, but I was pretty amazed. That had never happened to us before in nine years of visiting sandals. Thank you. 
Where are we? We're in Jamaica. We're in Jamaica. Ah, Jamaica. Ah, Bonchito ah, Bay. Bay. We're going to remake the cocktail movie. <laughs> <laughs> Who's getting pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'm not sure that any of us are that capable of making the 1980s cocktail movie starring Tom Cruise. But our Moby 70 Nights in the Making adventure had well and truly started. Our plan right now was to get unpacked and then meet Michael and Donna for more cocktails. You've got to bear in mind guys that at this point in our vacation with it only being day one Fiona and I were not familiar with this resort at all but we had agreed to meet Donna and Michael at the Latitude Bar on the Latitude Pier and we believe we might have just found it. And whatever cocktails these actually were, our Moby 70 Nights in the Making adventure had well and truly started. Don't worry guys, there will be plenty of time-lapse sunsets from the Sandals Montego Bay as our holiday diary continues. And back to Wednesday and day one of our adventure, we'd be finishing off this marathon day that started over 4,000 miles earlier at London's Heathrow Airport in the UK. And would end tonight at the Bayside Restaurant, which has sort of become the first night tradition for the four of us while visiting Sandals. And as we approach our table, this is where we're going to bring Wednesday and day one to a close. So if you wish to follow Fiona, Donna, Michael and I as we continue to enjoy Sandals Montego Bay as part of our Moby 70 Nights in the Making adventure, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon to be notified when our next video is published. But before we go in on Wednesday, I did manage to achieve another first night tradition at any sandals we've visited over the years and that of course is French onion soup. Here we go, first night, boys and girls. You joined Fiona and I on Thursday morning and our first full day at the Sandals Montego Bay as part of our Moby 70 Nights in the Making adventure. As usual in the Caribbean on our first day we were up pretty early. Our body clocks probably stuck somewhere over the Azores trying to get used to the new time zone. And for those wondering, Jamaica are in central time zone, so that's the same time zone as Texas. Which translates to the UK minus 6 hours at this time of year and the eastern seaboard of the US minus 1 hour. Right now we're heading to the Bayside for breakfast, which was our go-to for breakfast every morning except one. But those of you who have been to this resort before will be asking, why are you walking in the opposite direction, Graham? It's very simple guys, Fiona and I are up a little bit too early this morning, so we're going for a walk to explore this resort before breakfast.
guys this is known as the main pool at the Sandals Montego Bay and it will feature quite a lot throughout our holiday diary because this is where Fiona and I spent most of our days enjoying the summer sunshine at this resort. However you may have noticed that there's no towels in the towel station and that is going to feature a little bit more throughout this vacation as we realise there is a real challenge at this resort when it comes to pool towels and it took Fiona and I a few days to find a workaround but as you can see we have found our way across to the main block and that means that we're very close to the bayside now and every day bar one when we had breakfast at the bayside we ate outside at the end of the day with weather this good why wouldn't you For those of you watching this video that have visited Sandals in the past, you will know that the Bayside in the morning is a buffy style restaurant. The first station on the right is where you can pick up pre-made pancakes and waffles. It is also where you can choose your omelettes to order. Other than that, the Bayside is pretty well the same as any other Bayside buffy restaurant for breakfast that you will find at other Sandals resorts across the Caribbean. Despite my less than athletic build, I don't eat a lot for breakfast and I certainly never took any of the cooked breakfast here on offer at the Sandals Montego Bay but I do believe it's always very good and with us being Jamaica of course you're going to get Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee and with views like this at breakfast every morning hopefully you can appreciate why the Bayside was Fiona's and my choice for breakfast nearly every day And as I said previously, the main pool is where Fiona and I spent our mornings and most of our afternoons too, sunbathing under the warm, beautiful Jamaican sunshine. Well, that was until lunchtime when Fiona and I headed to Dino's and Mariner's, which being creatures of habit, we did every day during our Moby 70 Nights in the Making adventure. So, come here. Where's Donna and Michael? There's a special lunch. They're at a very so Donna and Michael are at a very special lunch for so very special, spe very very special people. And they're probably having very special food in very special company. And it's so special. Do you know where it is? Yeah. It's top secret special. And do you think the food will be as good? I don't know. I don't know. So here's to Donna and Michael's special secret lunch. I can guarantee you guys that Michael and Donna were not enjoying food as good as Fiona and I were at the Mariners this afternoon. Our awesome friends had made it to diamond status in the Sandals loyalty program and as a result they had been invited to a special lunch for diamond level guests only. Leaving Fiona and I to enjoy our lunch at the Mariners and Dino's followed by the Paris Cafe. And when we met up with Michael and Donna later on that afternoon we were glad we weren't diamond guests. And even if we were guys we wouldn't have gone anyway. I think these sort of events that Sandals put on for their higher category guests are complete corporate rubbish but for the rest of this holiday we would be referring to Michael and Donna as the special ones from now on and back at the pool on Thursday afternoon I started to indulge in a little bit of plane spotting something that we couldn't really avoid doing at the Sandals Montego Bay but a little bit more about that in a future episode because right now the pool was calling <laughs> All of the pools that we visited at the Sandals Montego Bay were really warm and were an absolute pleasure to step into. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and later on that afternoon, Fiona and I headed back to her room on the veranda to indulge in another tradition that we do most afternoons around 4 p.m. at Sandals. And this afternoon, I actually do think I managed to hit an American walking past the room as I popped the cork. Cheers. Cheers. 
And on Thursday evening, I've no idea why Fiona and Donna decided to get dressed up because we were just going to the Cricketers pub for dinner tonight. So, the best thing about Sandals Montego Bay, this is Colombian Emeralds, guys. There is no Colombian Emeralds. You can choose something here and they'll come up to the resort and then you'll feel absolutely compelled to buy something at some ridiculous overpriced. But this is it. Michael. Michael. Is this not the best thing about Sandals Montego Bay? I've got bad news for you, by the way. What? What do you think is doing? I'm going to get a stall out of it. I'm going to get a stall At this point in the evening, I did say a very bad word because there was a jewellery company displaying, well, funny enough, jewellery at the resort. We had realised that Columbian Emeralds didn't have a store on site here in the Sandals Montego Bay, but every couple of nights, a jewellery store came up to the resort with this concession stand. And I'm delighted to report that the only time Michaels and my American Express cards saw the light of day was when we checked out of the resort. So tonight we continued to the Cricketers pub. I know that I've said this on previous videos, but my GoPro Hero 9 is not very good in low light. So I'm afraid the video here from the Cricketers pub is not very good. But I should also state now that the Cricketers is one of the restaurants here at the Sandals Montego Bay that you don't need to reserve a table. And it is also where the entertainment moves to after 10pm. So if you want to watch Fiona strut her stuff on karaoke night, you're going to have to stick with this video series. But tonight, Thursday, was all about a quiet dinner with friends. Because as yet, we'd not managed to book any restaurants. And as we left the Cricketers on Thursday night, the evening's entertainment in the open air lobby area was in full swing. As usual, I don't want to break YouTube copyright rules. So we continued on past the evening's entertainment en route to the Paris Café for dessert. And truth be told guys, this was becoming another tradition of ours when visiting Sandals. Every evening we would go to the Paris Café for dessert. Well, unless we were eating at Butch's, which had absolutely fantastic desserts on the menu. And it's here we're going to bring this episode and our first full day at the Sandals Montego Bay to a close. Well, only after my less than successful attempt at a sunset time lapse. Friday morning and our second full day at the Sandals Montego Bay was the only morning we wouldn't be going to the Bayside restaurant. Instead, we would be trying the Italian restaurant, which here at Sandals Montego Bay is known as Caccini Romana. If you're wondering why we're walking in the wrong direction again this morning, well guys, Fiona and I were going on the hunt of a lounger on the beach today. And to be quite frank, it wasn't very successful. Because just like at the Sandals Grand Antigua in October 2021, here at the Sandals Montego Bay, those pesky butlers get up very early in the morning. 
grab hold of all of the beach towels that they can and they place them on the loungers on the beach for their guests which in effect means that non-butler guests have got absolutely no opportunity to get a beach lounger for themselves and given that 70 that means 70% of Sandals Montego Bay is butler level there really is no opportunity for non-butler level guests to locate a lounger by the beach so Fiona and I were heading back in the direction of the main pool we would beach ourselves, excuse the pun, for our second full day here at the resort. I think Fiona was feeling a little bit dejected at this point. I was certainly frustrated because we had found two major problems, or should I say challenges, at the Sandals Montego Bay. And in effect, we were only on day two. But I suppose this morning, at least we had towels. And there was certainly no problem during our entire stay getting loungers beside this main pool. But as you can see, we're now continuing our walk and approaching the main block. So we hadn't too much further to go until we reached Caccini Romanas. So this morning we would be walking through the outdoor seating area at the Bayside where we had breakfast yesterday morning and in fact where we had breakfast every other morning during our Moby 70 Nights in the Making adventure. And then we would be making our way up the stairs to Caccini Romana's where we would be escorted to our table for the morning. And as you can see the table we had this morning had an awesome view out to the Caribbean Sea. Despite the cloudy weather it was still gloriously warm. <laughs> After breakfast this morning, I had gone on the hunt of fresh beach towels. All of the towel stations were empty, but I managed to find one at the Club Sandals Lounge. But I have to admit that the Club Sandals team were less than helpful. In fact, one of the members was completely rude. Turned her back on me and walked off, despite me challenging the situation in the politest way I possibly could. And as you can see, Donna and Michael had managed to find Fiona. Anyway, as I tried to put the beach towel, or should I say lack of beach towel situation, to the back of my mind, I continue to indulge in some plane spotting this morning. As you can see we're back at Mariners and Dino's for lunch but we're back as a foursome today because the special ones had blessed us with their presence. And then Fiona wanted to play some basketball however Michael had decided he wanted to play football. You can definitely take the boy out of Glasgow but you can't take the Glasgow out of the boy. <laughs> As usual, Fiona got her way, but I'm not sure she had played basketball since she was at school in the early 1980s. However, Michael still believed he was playing football, or maybe he did think he was playing basketball, but with his feet. I've got absolutely no idea what he was playing at. And after half a bottle of Pinot Grigio, I'm not sure he knew either. <laughs> you would never have believed that Michael's brother was a professional football player in the Scottish Premier League after Michael destroyed most of the Mariners and Bayside restaurant with that kick. And yes, Michael, we now realise why you never followed your brother into professional football. You know, guys, there is a saying that God loves a trier, and Fiona was certainly trying her hand at basketball again and again. And I'm 100% confident that Michael shouldn't give up his day job of teaching. And before you ask, guys, Michael does not teach physical education. Alright, so you with your hands, alright? It's a real softball. Yes! 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 Yes!
so close. And clearly guys, I'm no better. Maybe I should just stick to making YouTube movies on travel, but then I'm not very good at that either, am I? Yay! Yay! Oh! 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 Going for bonus points. <laughs> Yay! 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 Oh, the Campbell's won that game. Oh, 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 Anyway, with our exercise done for the day, it's time that all four of us walked to the Ocean View side of the hotel because it was time for me to record a room review for a resort and room tour video. Which of course you can watch if you go back to video number 202 on the channel. And back to Friday and our walk to room 320, which was Michael and Donna's room for their entire 14 nights at the Sandals Montego Bay. And it's clear that after half a bottle of Pinot Grigio, it has made Donna less camera shy than normal. Your dressing room. And this is my... Princess Donna. <laughs> this is my show. Can you hear it? Yeah. It's beautiful. I yeah. like it. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. So, it's this room here. Yeah. No, the top. The top, the top one? Yeah. yeah. Right, excuse me, it's the penthouse. The penthouse. So what room is it? The penthouse. 320. 320, junior suite. Ocean but most importantly, it's Ocean Donna's room. House. And in a bid not to break any more YouTube copyright rules, I'll not be publishing Donna singing, which she was doing the whole way up the stairs to room 320. <laughs> So this is room 320, which is an ocean view. Here comes an ocean front penthouse. Junior suite. Those three decided to fly the coop while I did their room review, but quite honestly, guys, they couldn't stay away for very long. This has their mini bar been restocked. You gotta remember, Don and Michael are the special ones. <laughs> and they had a fully stocked mini bar, so the special ones, which are diamond level, must get their mini bar restocked. I don't know, should I go into Donna's closet? Big walk in closet, I'm not gonna go any further. Oh, the light came on. They brought a lot more clothes than Fiona and I. <laughs> Michael, why did you need all those dresses? Uh -huh. Half of the dresses are mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to repost their room review on this episode. You can go back to video number 202 if you want to watch our full resort and room tour from the Sandals Montego Bay. Well, Michael, can't, yeah, but you, can't, you can't complain of this view. Yeah, but haven't you slum it a bit? Well, if this is slumming it, <laughs> God help us. Right back to Friday and our next adventure was that we were going to go hobby catting. The decision was that Fiona and Donna would take out one hobby cat and Michael and I would take out the other hobby cat. However, what I do want to say here now is the fantastic team at Club Sandals advised us strongly not to take hobby cats out today. They said it was too stormy. Clearly all of that red stripe and Pinot Grigio had gone to our head on this very Friday. So with Captain Michael pumped up and fighting fit, Still fresh from his game of football, or was it basketball? Our plan was to follow the girls in the general direction of Cuba. And before you ask guys, the rescue boat was dispatched to bring us in with absolutely no idea where Fiona and Donna had got to. Our thought was maybe Cuba, but yeah, Michael and I weren't that lucky. Given that Michael had failed at football, we had all failed at basketball, and then all four of us completely failed at finding Cuba, we resorted to the one thing that we knew we were experts at. Yeah guys, we'd go to the bar and find a drink. But first, we needed to find out what the girls wanted.
I did say that we were experts in drinking, not fetching the drink and bringing it out to this platform in the middle of the Caribbean Sea, or that is what it seemed to be like, as Michael and I did our best to recreate the opening scenes from Saving Private Ryan. Without the bullets flying, of course. I was my second one, I chugged one. <laughs> And he looked at me and said, another one? This one's bad. I need that. I had to get rescued. Oh, oh, no, let me do this. Ah. <laughs> get up. With Michael clearly still suffering from the effects of half a bottle of Pinot Grigio at lunch, it's time for him to return from his second trip to the bar in only a minute or two. The question on all our lips, would Michael make it this time? I think after all of our adventures today, we all deserve a drink. See, Grace Jones could wear the goggles, but I could wear this on the plane. <laughs> so with Donna undressing Fiona on the beach, it was time for Michael and I to enjoy our last activity of the day. We were going snorkeling. So let's recap Friday guys, we failed at football, we failed at basketball, we failed to find Cuba and it looks like we failed to find fish too. I'm sure some of the politicians running our world right now would say that was a successful day. But I do promise you guys there will be plenty of fish on a future episode. Michael and I didn't give up on our first day of snorkeling. But look what we did find on our way back to the beach. I think we caught these two many decades ago. 10 or 15 minutes later there was some excitement because something was seen on the bottom of the ocean. So Graham and Michael were dispatched to find a plastic bag. Clearly guys it wasn't our day. So we headed up to the hot tub and did what we do best. Talking complete and utter rubbish as I've done throughout this episode and drinking of course. And this is where we're going to bring Friday to a close. But after I do a wrap of this video I'm going to bring this episode to a close with a montage of photographs that I took throughout the day. Yes! yes! I'm sliding! Yes! <laughs> what have I done to it on the pool? It's Friday! Yay! <laughs> oh I'm so god. Right, it's a wrap for Friday. It's a wrap for Friday. That's it, Fridays.
On Saturday morning, I was up just after 6am to start my resort and room tour. As you all know, I like to do these early in the morning to try and reduce the number of other guests that end up in my videos. And of course, my resort and room tour from the Sandals Montego Bay in July 2022 has already been produced and uploaded to YouTube. You just need to go back to video number 202 for my in-depth review on the Sandals Montego Bay. Right, Saturday morning, where are we going, Michael? Because I have absolutely no clue where yeah. you're taking us today. Sandals. Royal Plantation. The Royal Plantation. So we're going to go and see the Royal Plantation. And then the island off the Royal Plantation. And then the island called Cuba. Yep. Cuba, yeah. Cuba, four for four. <laughs> okay guys, you probably realise by now, we're not going to the Sandals Royal Plantation at all, we're going to the Sandals Royal Caribbean. And for those of you who have visited the Sandals Montego Bay or the Sandals Royal Caribbean before, will know that both resorts are next door to each other. And connectivity between both resorts is via this small minibus, which runs roughly every 30 minutes and takes just under 10 minutes to transfer you between either resort. So Fiona, Donna, Michael and I joined a number of other Sandals Montego Bay guests heading in the direction of the Sandals Royal Caribbean. sure if the Sandals Royal Caribbean is anywhere near the same size as Sandals Montego Bay. And when you're dropped off by the bus, it's like arriving in a rather colonial style of building. And just off the main reception area is this open air restaurant, which is a French restaurant. We ate here once as a group of four, and again Fiona and I came back on the evening that Donna and Michael left for the UK. And it was pretty good guys, in fact I would hold it up as good as the French restaurant at the Sandals Lazores Grenada, which currently is one of our favourites. And then walking through the reception, or should I call it the lobby area here at the Sandals Royal Caribbean, you exit into this very pretty garden area separated by small bridges over little lazy river pools. As the four of us continued to explore this lovely Sandals resort, our first impressions were, guys, we were very impressed. One thing that I do need to explain about the Sandals Royal Caribbean, it's built on a lagoon, which means the beach area here that you can see is not open to the sea. And the one thing that makes the Sandals Royal Caribbean very different from any other Sandals we've ever visited before, this resort has a mainland and an island. And here on the mainland side is the resort itself. And across on the island is a Thai restaurant, a jerk shack, and some rather gorgeous overwater bungalows. And of course, the only way to get across to the island is by a boat, which runs on a near constant basis between the mainland and, of course, the island. In October 2020, when we last visited the Sandals Grand St. Lucian, we visited the overwater bungalows at our favourite resort. And from a distance, these overwater bungalows at the Sandals Royal Caribbean in Jamaica look very similar. However, I think this island provides a certain amount of additional privacy. And in my opinion, that can only be a benefit when you're paying the kind of money that Sandals wants for one of these overwater bungalows. from this island the overwater bungalows are accessed via this bridge with clear signage advising all of those who were crossing that it was for the guests of the overwater bungalows only but for the rest of this island it was open to all sandals guests By the time 
we got to this resort and the island, it was probably around 11.30 a.m. So you can see the butlers have also got to these loungers by this little heart-shaped pool on the island. And of course, being sandals, none of the guests had taken up the loungers at all. It is an absolutely ridiculous situation at sandals this weather. And to the sandals Royal Caribbean, this guy's is the jerk shack. And this, of course, is the Thai restaurant. Now, I love Thai food, and I was really looking forward to eating at this restaurant, but we never managed to reserve a table during our 14 nights at the Sandals Montego Bay. If you had watched my resort and room tour back in video number 202, you may remember me describing the fact that Sandals are currently reducing the number of guests in each of their restaurants to try and keep the level of customer service high. However, I do think that this has given Sandals an even larger problem to deal with because they're allowing an occupancy level in the resorts at over 98%. So the Sandals Montego Bay is simply not able to provide the restaurant choices that guests want during their vacation. Anyway, we could see the ferry was on its way back, so it was time to head back to the pier and catch said ferry back to the main resort. This resort seemed to have lots of little nooks and crannies, including pools like this one, which included this awesome swim up bar, but we'll come back to that a little bit later on. As we continued our walk around what was an incredibly impressive Sandals Resort. This video from the beach gives you a very good idea of what this lagoon is all about with the sandbank out in the distance protecting the Sandals Royal Caribbean from the Caribbean Sea. And here's another lovely little nook and cranny, a fantastic little beach with plenty of people on it this time. And here's another little pool, which really does add to the ambience, including the fact this is simply a very interesting little resort. And seeing Michael on this pier means I think we've made it to the end of the road, or should I say, made it to the end of this resort. Anyway, reaching the end of the road, or was it the end of the resort, meant that it was time to head back to the bar and get a well-earned drink before we made our way back to the Sandals Montego Bay for lunch. And how was that for timing? The shuttle bus was there waiting to take us back to Montego Bay. Even making our way to the pool loungers around lunchtime, as you can see, they were empty. There was plenty available for Fiona and I. But I also think that Saturday is one of the larger, busier changeover days here at Sandals. So there was probably a lot of guests leaving the resort while we were waiting on new guests to arrive. Cheers! Cheers. Cheers. 
And later on Saturday afternoon, Michael and I thought we would try some more snorkeling. And buzzing from the failures of yesterday, or should I say Friday, we had hopes for more fish this time. Yep, I have to admit that today's snorkeling was a lot more successful than yesterday. And on Saturday night, we headed to Oleander's for dinner. I have to admit, guys, that it was probably one of the worst meals we'd had during our stay at the Sandals Montego Bay. And this is where we're going to bring Saturday to a close. But not before I share a time lapse of the sunset from Donna and Michael's room. That is 3.20. Graham here living the dream in July 2022. We were picked up from the Sandals Montego Bay at just before 10 a.m. this morning. We've been driven up about 45 minutes to the Martha Bray River where we're going to go rafting. It's going to take about 75 minutes and then we'll be picked up and taken back to the resort. So let's go with Fiona, Donna, Michael and myself as we go rafting on the Martha Bray River. Armed with the tickets that we booked from the on-site Sandals tour desk in the lobby bar, Fiona and I were ready to head to the lobby to be collected for the 45 minute drive to the Martha Bray River. And as we approached the main pool, where of course Fiona and I had been sunbathing for the last few days, we saw the towel station being replenished by beach towels. But I have to be clear guys, I think during our 14 nights at the Sandals Montego Bay, this was the one and only time we saw the beach towels being replenished in the morning. You excited Donna? Yes. Are you excited Michael? Yeah. <laughs> Are you excited Fiona? Oh. <laughs> what the hell have I got myself into this morning? These lot are a bundle of laughs. I need new friends and a new wife, right? You'll never get special friends with us. Oh, no, 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 you're absolutely right. I don't think at my time in life that I could meet friends as special as Michael and Donna. They are the special ones. For sure. I think it was about 10 past 8 on Sunday morning that we met in the lobby reception to be collected by the transport that would be taking us to the Martha Bray River. Our tickets were then collected and checked by a representative from the Sandals tour desk before we headed to the pickup point at the front of the resort where our bus would be arriving shortly to take us on the 45 minute drive. This was going to be rather a hard trip to vlog because heavily tinted windows are a thing of nightmares for a vlogger like myself. So my friend guys that I'm not going to be showing you too much from this bus ride from the Sandals Montego Bay to the car park at the Martha Bray River Rafting Centre. We did however stop at the Iberworld Resort to collect more guests for this tour. And then we were off again bound for the Martha Bray River.
Our next tour on Friday will be to the Duns River Falls. The great news is, guys, on that trip I called Shotgun and got some great footage as we travelled eastbound along the A1, which is the main road linking Montego Bay and Kingston. So watch out for that footage coming up in a future episode. But back to this episode, we're finally arriving at the car park where we would get off the bus and get our first view of the Martha Bray River. I want to point out guys that this tour is not whitewater river rafting and much to Donna's disappointment this was going to be a much more sedate version of rafting on the Martha Bray River. However as you can see life jackets were still mandatory as we made our way down to the start point. And here are the bamboo rafts that we'll be taking us on our journey down this lovely little lazy river. So we all lined up to take our turn to board our raft. I must say that the boarding process was very efficient and well organised. Donna, the special ones are going first. See you on the flip side. Testicle spectacles wallet watch, Donna. <laughs> so as Donna and Michael boarded their raft, Fiona and I prepared to wave them goodbye and prepare ourselves for following on the next raft. sure what we expected from this river raft but you know guys it was a lovely way to spend a Sunday morning in Jamaica. Our guide was excellent and talked us through many points of interest as we made our way down the river and as I suggested earlier to Donna's disappointment without a category 5 white river rapid in sight. As you make your way down the Martha Bray River on these bamboo rafts, you will come across these pop-up like market stalls where you are encouraged to buy. However, we didn't. And in case you're wondering, the journey down the Martha Bray River from start to finish can take anywhere between 45 minutes and 90 minutes depending on how much rain they've had in Jamaica. From memory, I think our trip took just over one hour. And two thirds of our way through the trip, we caught up with Michael and Donna. The special ones are losing. Uh, <laughs> as, we approach, as we approach as we approach Schumacher So lovely, isn't it? Oh, it's so you haven't got to the uh, category five rapid yet, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't say this often enough, guys. This was an extremely relaxing way to spend a Sunday morning during our Moby Seventy Nights in the Making Adventure. their downtimes the rafting guys make this art to try and supplement their income as you get offered the opportunity to purchase the product of their labor towards the end of your rafting experience And 
And that's it. We'd reached the end of our Sunday morning raft on the Martha Bray River. And Fiona and I can't recommend this trip highly enough. If you're looking for something a little different, extremely relaxing to do during your Moby adventure. So with Donna and Michael coming in behind us, all that now stood between us and our journey back to the Sandals Montego Bay, of course, was the obligatory gift shop. And that's it guys, we were back on the bus bound for Sandals, Montego Bay. So Sunday afternoon Fiona and I are just back in the room and this is something that Fiona's noticed I haven't probably because I've drunk too much by then. Because every time you've done an Island Roads tour, you get something left in your room today. A bottle of fizz and some chocolate dipped covered fruit. That'll be the 2.30 in Miami probably, or Fort Lauderdale, or Orlando, or Tampa, I don't know. But anyway, bottle of bubbly. Chocolate colored fruit. Chocolate colored? Chocolate covered fruit. Truth be told guys, we found out a little bit later that the chocolate covered fruit and the champagne had not been provided by the island tour desk. But it was a little gift from our other awesome friends from the UK, Mr and Mrs Sandals themselves, Ken and Myra. Back at the resort, we did very little else that Sunday afternoon, except heading straight to Mariners for a bite of lunch. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday night day. Five Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Day five. So I'm lost, guys. It's day five. It's Sunday. We've been rafting on the Martha Bray River today. Very strenuous. Incredibly strenuous. It was very, very strenuous. And tonight we're off to Butches, which was our favourite in Grenada. Let's see if it still remains our favourite here at Montego Bay. Right, let's go and find Donna and Michael and get mm -hmm. a drink and get some steak. As that introduction stated, Fiona, Donna, Michael and I were off to Butchers for dinner tonight. We were really looking forward to our steak on this very Sunday evening. When you arrive at Butchers or Soy, before you get seated in the restaurant, you get to spend some time at this awesome outdoor bar. <laughs> Yes, you really don't have to, but it would be rude not to, guys. And you know, it was a lot of fun. And a fantastic place to enjoy each other's company while waiting to be seated at Butcher's Restaurant, where we all had an absolutely fantastic meal. And when we made it back to the main lobby area on that Sunday night, a disco was well underway. And this is where we're going to bring Sunday to a close. <laughs> start looking for towels this morning but uh, the first 
towel station I've come across, there's absolutely none. Let's see if there's any further on in the resort today. There was yesterday, so there is a little bit of hope. For those of you who follow the channel on a regular basis, you will already realize that I'm an early riser. I like to get up early in the morning while my wife is still snoozing on, and I tend to go for a walk. And why wouldn't you when you're in an absolutely beautiful resort like the Sandals Montego Bay? Right, let's go and do another day of absolutely nothing here in paradise. Well, this was for the broken heart, lame the wee to afraid star, the dreams it only came to pass. And guess what guys, I think there even might be some fresh pool towels being restocked here at the towel station next to the main pool. And for those of you who might be interested, it took me a whole 1 minute and 27 seconds to walk from our room to the main pool here at Sandals Montego Bay, where I found my gorgeous wife lying in the sun reading her Kindle. One of the unfortunate things about being a business owner guys is you really can't escape work. Uh, you do get plenty of vacation time because you only answer to yourself and nobody else of course I answered it Fiona but today I had to come into the, the room and do a Microsoft Teams call what I will say is the internet here in our room at the Sandals Montego Bay was really good I've just had an hour long Teams meeting used both voice and video and it was really good it worked well so um, that's another positive another thumbs up for the Sandals Montego Bay. It's been a lot better here, the internet, than the other Sandals resorts that we've visited over the years. Right, that's my Surface laptop back safely in the safe. So it's time to go and meet Fiona and get some lunch. Guys, I know it's only halfway through our first week, but it gets harder and harder to bring you new content in these videos the further into the vacation we go. And there are only so many Cheers segments that we can bring you from the Mariners here at the Sandals Montego Bay Beach. However, this afternoon, Fiona did take part in the beach activities just next to our having lunch. Two, three, and up. One, two, you know guys you've got to admire the entertainment team on site at sandals montego bay they did an absolutely fantastic job every day and some days they had a thankless task getting guests involved in their beach activities but as you can see not today <laughs> And if you're wondering where we're going, on Monday afternoon Fiona and I decided to go and find Michael and Donna because Michael and I wanted to try to find more fish and therefore snorkel. And to bring you the fish shots when Michael and I are snorkeling, I have to sift through hours of video just to find those few shots where there's actually fish in them. But snorkeling around any of the many piers at Sandals Montego Bay is very rewarding when it comes to fish spotting. However, depending on the sunlight on that particular day, my GoPro sometimes struggles to bring these videos to life. Change the world if we would just believe Right, where we're going? 
Honey Hanks. Curry goes curry for dinner on Monday night. Monday night curry. Let's go. Let's get out of here. We're late. And you may have guessed already, guys. Fiona, Donna, Michael and I were heading to the Bombay, which is an Indian restaurant at the Sandals Royal Caribbean. The challenge, as always, being when we booked a table at the Royal Caribbean, it meant we had to take the little shuttle bus, which meant we were in a time constraint because we had to catch said shuttle bus at a specific time from the Sandals Montego Bay across to the Sandals Royal Caribbean. As you will have seen in our last video during daylight hours, the journey between the Sandals Montego Bay and the Sandals Royal Caribbean took just over five minutes. But the evening shuttle between the Montego Bay and the Royal Caribbean could be very busy. So my advice if you want to get across to the Royal Caribbean in time for your meal reservation, get to the front of the line early and you'll have no problem getting on the first bus. But the bus would come straight back to the Montego Bay to pick up those that had failed to collect on the first trip. And here we are guys entering the Bombay at the Sandals Royal Caribbean where we were met by Kevin aka Big Bird an awesome fantastic member of the Sandals team here at the Royal Caribbean who showed us to our table. And this is where I'm going to bring Monday night's episode to a close. But before I go here are some photographs of the awesome meal that we had at the Bombay at the Sandals Royal Caribbean. Tuesday morning, going into Montego Bay, no idea what we're doing, but shopping, shopping, you want to find the plumbing emeralds? No, I do Anyway, right, we're going to go into Montego Bay, see what there is to see, and probably be back here by lunch-ish, unless we find a pub. No. Oh, KFC. KFC. If we find a KFC, we'll stay longer. For those of you who follow the channel on a regular basis, you will know that KFC is mine and also Michael's guilty pleasure. And when off property during our two weeks at the Sandals Montego Bay, we only spotted two KFCs. Anyway, back to Tuesday morning, we'd taken the decision to go into Montego Bay and that meant that we were heading towards the lobby reception area at the moment where we were going to book a taxi. And of course, the fantastic reception team at Sandals in the lobby got us a taxi in less than 10 minutes. So we were soon on route to Montego Bay which was going to take between 15 and 20 minutes and the deal our driver made with us was very simple it would cost us $20 each return so $80 in total to take us from the Sandals Montego Bay into the hip strip and back again the driver gave me his card with his cell phone number on it and I simply had to call him when we wanted picked up however total bad planning on our behalf because if we had bothered to do some research we would have realized that there was a cruise ship in Montego Bay today so that meant the hip strip was going to get very, very busy. Guys, I'm going to be completely open and honest with you. This trip into Montego Bay was a massive mistake for us. It was a pretty miserable experience and one that we totally regretted and we advise none of you to do yourselves. However, we did find this statue of Usain Bolt made out of bolts less. It was very clever indeed. The birds have just begun. We will always take a step. And this statue of Usain Bolt was the only good thing we found in Montego Bay itself. The fact was, guys, the pressure that we were put under by storekeepers to go into their store and buy was unbelievable. And even when you did venture into their store, the prices were incredibly high. But of course, 
they weren't going to be the price we paid because we would get lots of discount. Why would these shopkeepers not price the products at the correct price to start with? And hell mend you if you didn't go into their store. Because far too often when we didn't go into one of the shops, the shopkeepers and their staff resorted to name calling. And I can tell you guys, we were called some pretty ugly things during our short visit to the hip strip in Montego Bay. We hadn't just gone into Montego Bay to do some sightseeing. We actually had gone in with US dollars in our pocket to spend. We had a shopping list, but all of us felt so uncomfortable. Being put under the pressure we were and called some pretty ugly names, I simply called the taxi driver to come back and pick us up. So our advice if you're staying at the Sandals Montego Bay, don't bother going into the hip strip. In our experience, it was a very unfriendly and unwelcome place. And I can tell you, we were all very glad to be back on the property that is the Sandals Montego Bay. So we went straight to the Mariners for lunch and there was a reggae band playing that afternoon and Fiona decided to join in. I went back to watch these guys at lunchtime on the following Tuesday. They were absolutely brilliant. They were an awesome reggae band and we really enjoyed the music. And back on the beach, Michael and I decided to go snorkeling again. But this time we had brought bread with us, alias fish food. Our cunning plan was that we might be able to bribe the fish to come to us this time. And this, guys, is where I'm going to bring Tuesday to an end. I did say on yesterday's episode that as we get into this vacation, we would find less and less new content to bring you. Just come We must never stop the way Birds chirping and I hear my name Grasping into a life Life is happy but it's so insane We must merely make a strive Savannah Right, it's Wednesday, that's us halfway through. What do we call this video? I mean, we're halfway through. No, 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 that's not what it is. We're halfway through Moby, Seven Nights in the Making. It is Wednesday, we've taken absolutely no content today. We've done absolutely nothing. The Fiona's got crisps, that's what an American? Chips. Chips. Fiona speaks fluent American, it's great. So we've got chips, we're going to have some champagne, and tonight we're going to Tokyo Joe's. After this, we'll put some photographs of that. But I think we're going to do a sunset tonight because it's been a beautiful day. Let's see how that works out. Hi. Champagne? Mm-hmm. Crisps? Mm-hmm. Or chips? Crisps. Crisps. Wednesday and the start of week two in our Moby Sunday Nights in the Making adventure. I am really struggling finding new content, guys. So we're going straight to Wednesday night and our first visit to Tokyo Joe's. But even by this stage on Wednesday evening, Fiona and Donna clearly had been hitting the Pinot Grigio again. So camera shy they weren't. And clearly causing mayhem, chaos and disruption to the smooth operation of Tokyo Joe's, which is one of the restaurants here at the Sandals Montego Bay that you don't need to reserve a table. The process behind this restaurant is very simple guys. You choose a starter from the menu and once your starter is done you head up to the cooking station where you choose your ingredients and then the fantastic chefs here at Tokyo Joe's cook up your dinner. And total respect to every single one of the chefs at Tokyo Joe's working in this heat. You guys are absolute legends. And before you ask guys, the food did taste absolutely fantastic.
And that's it guys, we finished off Wednesday night at the Cricketer for a well-earned nightcap. So I'm going to finish off this very light day of content with another time lapse, this time from the room Fuel and I spent the first 11 nights in. That's room 607. Thursday morning, that is the beginning of our second week here at Sandals Montego Bay. Michael and I are going snorkeling, got my gear this morning at 10.30 in one of the official Sandals snorkeling trips. After that, we've not got a lot planned, so let's see what Thursday has to hold for us here at Mobe, 70 nights in the making. As you can see, the maintenance team here at the Sandals Montego Bay are doing some painting. In our opinion, this resort has been kept in a beautiful condition. And I'm in no doubt the building's maintenance team start at one end, move all the way down the resort to the other end before going back to the beginning to start it all over again. And guess what, guys? There's towels coming this morning. The towel ferry must have finally arrived from the south coast. And Donna and Michael have arrived at the poolside where Fiona is already sunbathing. Anyway, it's time for me to leave Fiona and head to the Sandals Water Sports Centre. And that's where I'd be picking up my flippers and then heading to the dive boat. Savannah, and this is where we picked up our flippers, before heading to the main pier where the Sandals dive boat would be meeting us. The beauty of the world, Savannah, let's all take a these life jackets, guys, were mandatory, but blowing them up was optional. So as we prepared for our official sandals snorkeling trip, the boat left the dock bound for a reef about 10 minutes away. Clearly Michael and I didn't need any snorkel headgear, we'd brought our own, but sandals do provide the snorkel mask if you need it. But remember guys, this is all part of your sandals all-inclusive experience, so it doesn't cost a penny extra. And as you can see here, we're approaching the dive site. Swim responsible. Don't, do not touch nothing. Do not take any marine life. Even if it's very small like planting, still put that in the water. We don't disturb the marine life. So after a quick safety briefing and a reminder not to pick up or touch any marine life during our snorkel trip, we were ready to go. We were dropped off into about 30 feet of water, but we were also right next to a reef, which rose up in places to approximately one foot from the surface. And I know guys what you're thinking, the no touch rule applied to everyone else but the Americans. Savannah. 
I think it's fair to say that this official sandal snorkel trip was light on fish, but the coral was absolutely beautiful and I'm glad I saw it. And to this day, I've got no idea why these snorkelers dived to the bottom or what they picked up or tried to pick up. Lions roaring in the morning sun Searching for a longer day People feeling like the light has just come We must never stop the way yeah. I guess that all good things must come to an end So when the horn sounded we were to swim back to the boat Life is happy but it's so we must merely make a strive Savannah I'm coming home Savannah We'll never be alone Savannah The beauty of the So with the official Sandals snorkeling trip over It was time for Michael and I To go back and find out where the girls were up to Savannah So the question is, as we relax on Thursday afternoon, we've got a thunderstorm just to the south of us. It's very, very hot today. And the aircraft are definitely reducing power and take off. And then we've got that. We've already heard a lot of thunder. The question is, will it move north? And uh, it is here in Montego Bay. Anyway, who knows? Our Thursday afternoon continues here at Sandals Montego Bay. So Thursday afternoon, we're with the special ones on their special private beach. Yes. Is this Donna's? Is this we're calling this Donna's beach? Yes, this is Donna's beach. Donna's Donna's beach. Yeah. As you can see, there's nobody else allowed in Donna's Beach. We, Fiona and I, could only come here under special invitation. You know guys, nobody ever found this part of the beach, which was right outside the front of the bayside and the main block at the Sandals Montego Bay. Maybe the other guests simply chose not to come to this part of the beach because the cocktail waiters and waitresses never wandered this far down to take drinks orders. But for Michael and I, we had Fiona and Donna for that. That. We will always take a stand for the people for However, this part of the beach was where the motorized water sports activities started and ended. And today Fiona and I thought it was a good idea to try out the donuts. Let's go back to when trees were swung. <laughs> you <did that> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> well, that's a good start. This was fantastic. It was so much fun. It had been more than 25 years since I had done this. And yes, guys, motorized water sports like these donuts and water skiing are still part of your all inclusive sandals package. Anyway, back on the Nevins a private beach. Donna, the cocktail waitress, had failed in her duties and those horrible dark clouds looked and sounded like they were getting a lot closer. So the storm did arrive overhead. The beach is emptied. This doesn't do justice this side of the uh, resort because it's blowing a gale on the other side. Fiona and I are going to run this. 
Yes guys, Fiona and I, we're finally going to make use of the outside Tranquility soaking tub. But before we do that, crossing to the front of the room, you can see what the storm is bringing through. This is what I mean. <laughs> right, Fiona's filling the bath, but I think this is where we're going to end today's video. <laughs> It is Friday of week two in our Moby Seven Nights in the Making adventure. We're up a little bit earlier this morning because Fiona, Donna, Michael and I are off to do a hike in the waterfalls. I'm not sure if it's the Duns River waterfalls or not, but we'll find out shortly. We've been picked up at 20 past eight and then we, according to the agenda, we'll be back around 1.30 this afternoon. So come with us as we go and see what this waterfall hike is all about. It was going to be a really early start for us this morning. Well, early on holiday terms because, as I said, we were meeting in the lobby at 8.20 a.m. And it was when we arrived in the lobby that we found out that there were three couples, including ourselves, booked on this Duns River Falls hike. However, the other couple had cancelled, which means Fiona, Donna, Michael and I would have the minivan to ourselves on the 90-minute commute from the Sandals Montego Bay to the Duns River Falls car park. And yes guys, I managed to call a shotgun this morning and get myself up front in the passenger seat in a bid to try and obtain better footage on this drive between the Sandals Montego Bay and the Duns River Falls. Well certainly I hope it was going to be a lot better than the drive last Sunday when we went on the Martha Bray River rafting tour. And our driver this morning was absolutely excellent and given that 99% of our journey between Montego Bay and the Duns River Falls were along the A1 which is the main road linking Montego Bay and Kingston. And while this major road is kept in very good condition by the Jamaican authorities, the driving itself in Jamaica leaves a lot to be desired. Anyway, we got there in one piece, finally turning off the A1, less than 10 minutes away, I believe, from the Sandals Ochi Rios, where Fiona and I were booked to visit in July 2023, until two days ago at the time of editing this video. Anyway, here we are arriving at the Duns River Falls car park. In hindsight, the instructions from Sandals ahead of this trip weren't that great. But as recommended, we did buy water shoes when we were in Montego Bay the other day. You can, of course, buy them here before you go on the Falls hike, but they are significantly cheaper when bought in Montego Bay. As you can see, Michael and I wore swimming shorts and a t-shirt, but in hindsight, I should have brought a fresh t-shirt for the trip home. Fiona and Donna wore bathing suits, but based on their feedback, I think they had wished they brought something more appropriate for the hike. Are we all excited? Donna? Very excited. Fiona? <laughs> Michael. Just put it on for the camera, please. <laughs> uh, your excitement. Yeah, really excited. Really excited. We're so excited. Thank you. As you can see, the entire infrastructure around this Duns River Falls attraction is top class. Basically, right now, our driver is leading us down to the start of the Falls Trail, where we would be meeting our guide for the day. And it was at this point we completed the usual waiver forms. Basically, guys, if we fall and break a leg, it's our own fault. This gentleman is one of our two guides for the Duns River Falls hike. The second guide would be doubling up as a videographer because at the end of this tour you would be given the option to purchase said video at a cost of $40. We did purchase the video but to be frank it wasn't very good. But I am going to supplement this video with some shots taken by the official videographer. In the meantime we're on our way down to the meeting point at the beach.
And this would be our small tour group heading up the Duns River Falls hike. And this, guys, is where the Duns River Falls meets the beach. And you guessed it, this is where our hike started. And this lady is our second guide, and as you can see, our videographer. Are you ready? Yeah, well, hey, be careful, alright? Okay. So you're ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Come on. Come on. What about you, Sprinkle? Oh, I'm ready. Alright. Oh, so you're ready? Yeah, man. No problem, no problem. And as we made our first nervous steps up the Duns River Falls, there was no doubt in our minds we were going to get soaking wet during this hike. How deep are we? We were asked if this was a strenuous hike or not. To be absolutely frank guys, it's not really. I think awkward would be a better adjective to use. When walking in this water, a lot of the time you'd no idea where you were putting your feet. So it was very easy to slip into a small hole or a crevice and hurt your foot or ankle. I think from bottom to top you climbed just over 900 feet. But it was a fairly gradual climb so it wasn't that strenuous at all.
was the Duns River Falls hike, guys. Do that. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's I brilliant. recommend that. Apart from, I mean, battered and bruised. Yeah, that's it. We feel it in the morning. As I've said throughout this episode, that was not a hard hike, but we were battered and bruised by the end of it. And as I said at the end of the Martha Bray River rafting tour, all that stood between us now and our trip back to the Sandals Mondego Bay was, of course, the souvenir stores. <laughs> Sitting on towels and in bad need of a change of clothes, we were now on our way back to the Sandals Montego Bay. And turning back onto the A1 westbound, it would take us roughly 90 minutes to get back to the resort. And for those of you who are interested, if you turned left at this roundabout, you would be joining the toll road to Kingston, Jamaica's capital. If memory serves me right, our driver said it would take 40 minutes to get to Kingston from this roundabout, but she did say the toll was very expensive. As you can imagine, the closer you get to Montego Bay, the better the A1 road gets. However, our driver did explain that the commute between Montego Bay and Kingston, even with that toll road and it only being 120 miles or so, would take nearly three hours. The good news for Fiona, Donna, Michael and I was that we were now nearing the end of our journey back to the Sandals Montego Bay. have very little more content to share with you from this Friday. So to finish off our day at the Sandals Montego Bay, Michael and I decided to go snorkeling again. So let's see if we can find any fish as we swim approximately half the length of the entire resort. As I walk up the beach to meet Michael and the girls, it's time to finish this video, but first I'm going to share some photographs that we took from the Duns River earlier today. What are you doing today? Not a lot. Nothing? Nada? Oh, I'm not a lot. Saturday and day 11 out of 14 and yes guys I'm struggling to find you new content again. With our hike of the Duns River Falls yesterday and therefore in the last video published here on YouTube that's all of the excursions done that we had booked during our Moby 70 Nights in the Making adventure. And as Fiona and I head up to our usual sun bathing spot beside the main pool, guess what guys there are some beach tiles available in the towel station Kel Sapri. I know that I've repeatedly been sarcastic about sandals and the complete lack of beach towels at this resort. Towards the end of our holiday, they were being replenished every day, but not until mid 
or late morning. And that's why Fiona and I were getting into the habit to picking up beach towels in the afternoon, taking them up to a room ahead of the next day. And the management here at Sandals Montego Bay had assured us that they were changing their outsourcing policy. So rather than the towels doing a four to five hours round trip, to the south coast they'd only be going on a three-hour round trip to the ochi so while i really hope this towel situation at the montego bay gets resolved as soon as possible somehow i'm not sure it will and it's clear by the 11th day guys that even my gorgeous wife and i were running out of things to talk to each other about obviously facebook had more exciting things to say than me Right, it's Saturday and Donna Michael's last night here at Moby is going to be cut short because it's four o'clock and what does that mean? Well, it means that thunderstorms are about to arrive. We've just come back up to our room here and Natessa, I think that's her name, Natessa, that's what Fiona tells me, has done a bath for us. I think in the entire time we've been in sandals, that's the first time that's ever happened. It happened to Breathless in Punta Cana a few years ago. But as you can see, the curtains to our veranda, balcony, whatever you want to call it, are closed. And Fiona and I have a bath. Do you know what, guys? I think we're going to open a bottle of champagne and enjoy it. thunderstorm were the only times we ever saw the planes taking off in the opposite direction and this also included landing traffic it only happened about three times during our 14 nights at the resort And as I said previously, with Saturday being a slow content day, I'm going to finish off with a few photographs. That's it for Saturday, guys. Right, Sunday morning. What are you doing, Fiona? We don't go home to Wednesday. I'm What? I'm getting You're packing up. But you don't go home to Wednesday. What are you doing? I'm packing up. We're having to move rooms today. This was one of the problems. We're flitting. Uh, yeah, as we call it in Scotland, we are flitting. Um, this was one of the issues that we had when we had to do the rebooking. Um, due to the graduation and that is that Sandals couldn't give us this room for all 14 nights. So we're going over to a new room today. We have no idea what we're doing, where we're going, except that we have to check out by 11. Uh, we have no idea when we'll check into our new room, but just have to wait and see. That'll all come later. Until then, Fiona's trying to be really organised and a case, one case for the stuff that's like dirty washing. And another case that we're taking so she's dead organized it's uh, it's not like her the same thing happened to us at the sandals grand antigua last year sandals couldn't give us the same room for 14 nights so we were having to move for the last three nights of this vacation we were well planned this year we left three of our cases outside the door to be collected by the incredible sandals team and taken to a new room and we kept one case with us including all of our valuables so we headed to the club lounge to check out It's akin to the last, it's the last yeah. supper. Cheers. Cheers! Well on New York! <laughs> <laughs> 
And thank you, Donna, for plugging our next series here on the channel. We're calling Virgin New Yorkers. But I'll bring you an introduction to that series in a few weeks here on the channel. But back here to Sandals Montego Bay, and Donna and Michael are preparing to leave the resort this evening. It's Sunday evening. Fiona and I have been moved to a new room, which is 1280, which is probably one of the oldest blocks on the uh, property. As you can see, we're having to negotiate workmen's benches uh, just to get to the room, trip over those. It's, that's not great, guys. It's, uh, it's a pretty poor room. If you want to continue to see my rant on the pretty poor room that we were given here for the last three nights, that's room 1280 in a very old wing of the Sandals Montego Bay, just go back to video number 202 and our resort and room tour. But the highlights, or should I say the lowlights, we're having to squeeze past this workman's bench just to get to the stairs up to said room and you know guys it could have been such a lovely room if sandals had spent some money and a little bit of tlc on this old wing it was exactly the same original room design as room 320 the room that michael and donna had for all 14 nights of their moby seven nights in the making adventure it was just that this room was badly in need of a refurbishment because nothing really worked guys most of the usb sockets were all broken and the furniture was simply knackered. Oh yeah, and the shower over the bath leaked like a sieve. And for any Americans watching this video, one of the biggest challenges we face here in the UK is our flights from the Caribbean leave at night. They're typically overnight services back to the UK, so that means we tend to leave the resort around 5 to 6 p.m. And sandals don't really cater for us. They still request that we check out by 11 a.m. and the facilities they provide us to change later on aren't great. So today, Donna and Michael used our new room to freshen up and get changed before heading to the airport to catch the evening Virgin Atlantic back to London Heathrow. And as we walked Michael and Donna back to reception where they were being picked up to go back to the airport, we walked past this massive 100 guest wedding party, most of whom were not staying in the resort so had day passes or were only staying for a night or two. The bottom line guys, far too many of them got way too drunk and caused mayhem and chaos that night to the point we had to call the police. So without a doubt, Sunday was a very low point for Fiona and I during our Moby seven nights in the making adventure. Not only were Donna and Michael leaving for the UK, but we didn't get much sleep that night with excessive noise and a fight breaking out right outside our door. As we approached the front lobby pickup point, the bus was there waiting for Michael and Donna and Fiona and I. Funny enough, but that's another story. Well, that's Donna and Michael. Yeah, Michael and Donna were still here because the bus hadn't left yet because they were waiting for two more guests. The same two guests that are sitting here talking to you right now. And finally, the luggage doors started to close. Only to reopen again a few minutes later. And then we waited a bit longer to wave Michael and Donna goodbye and a bit longer and a bit longer again. And then Fiona went to check and yep, she was absolutely right. They were also waiting for Mr. and Mrs. Campbell who were expected on that Virgin Atlantic flight tonight to London as well. As usual, Sandals communication had failed completely. We weren't checking out, we just changed rooms for the last three days. So with that miscommunication all sorted out, Michael and Donna were on their own some on that massive bus en route to Sangster International Airport, less than 10 minutes away. And back at the Sandals Montego Bay, the four had become two, and with Fiona and I now staying at room 1280, which is right next to the Crystal Lagoon, it was time to check out their pool.
sometime around now. There they go. <laughs> That's Donna and Michael away. <laughs> It is Monday and our last few days here at the Sandals Montego Bay. I'm going to do a couple of hours work this morning here in the room. The internet held up as usual. So one thing I will say about Sandals Montego Bay, the internet here in Jamaica is a lot better than in some of the other Caribbean islands. I've had a good internet connection. I've been able to do a couple of Teams calls and uh, absolutely no complaints there. I'll come back to this room a little bit later, probably going to sit down and have a chat with you tomorrow morning and go through the good, the bad and the ugly of this resort because tomorrow, Tuesday, is going to be our last full day here in the resort because Wednesday we're heading back to the UK and that's going to be a completely separate video. Okay, Fiona and I are trying a different spot for some bathing. Now we're in this new room, 1280. So I'm gonna take you with me on the very long journey, not really guys, uh, to where Fiona and I have chosen our spot for the next couple of days by the one of the swimming pools. Maybe that's what it's called, I'm not 100% sure. So let's go and find Fiona on the resort this morning and uh, let's start another day here in Jamaica. The first thing I want to say as I head down the stairs is I'm sorry I should have cleared my lens because the GoPro had steamed up leaving the air conditioning out into the hot humidity of the Jamaican sunshine. And finally after nearly 10 hours of complaining to the Sandals customer services team they cleaned the blood off the stairs from the fight that happened outside our room last night. Anyway this fogging on the camera lens has just got beyond a joke. I'm going to jump straight to the next segment. But as I said earlier Fiona and I had chosen to lie beside the this gorgeous little crystal lagoon pool and I must say it is probably one of the warmest swimming pools I've ever been in it was absolutely fantastic guys and we should have found it a lot earlier than the penultimate day here at the Sandals Montego Bay right we're on our way to lunch at the Mariners or is it Dino's no guys it's probably both but first of all Fiona wanted to feed some wildcats that she saw outside our new room which is 1280 These cats certainly weren't as sociable as the cats that we found on property at the Sandals, La Zos Grenada or the Grand Antigua last year. And I know there will be some of you out there who don't like cats, but let me be absolutely clear. You're not going to come across any vermin at any of these Sandals resorts. And the reason for that is these cats. They're simply higher in the food chain. But anyway, Fiona, Donna, Michael and I love cats. So we do our best to feed them a little bit extra when we can. Monday evening, we're on the move again. Did they say 708? So basically, we're moving from this room, which is a, I'm trying to think of the adjective here. It's, it's a, well, tired is one word. It's a hangover from the 1980s. And when this resort was first opened, apart from, of course, the flat screen TV, because let's be absolutely clear, guys, a TV that size in the 1980s just didn't exist, but <laughs> Fiona did repacking in about 10 minutes, so well done Fiona. But the room's all done, and we're moving to the third floor of the same block we were in for the first 11 nights, so as I said, I'm going to do a sit down tomorrow morning and talk about the good, the bad and the ugly of this resort early. But 
It's called flit number two. We'll sit down and have a drink until the, the bellhop comes and uh, takes her stuff. So that's it guys, we are moving again for the last two nights of Moby, seven nights in the making. Come with us on YouTube and we will, uh, well, we'll take you on another adventure. Until later. I think after last night's escapades with that wedding party, the fight outside a room and then the blood that covered the stairs outside a room for more than 10 hours, Fiona and I were glad to be away from that particular block at the Sandals Montego Bay. And climbing the stairs in the room block that we spent the first 11 nights of Moby 70 nights in the making, it felt like we were coming home. I do want to make it clear that that room 1280 was a category of room that we actually had booked for the last three nights. We also don't hold Sandals responsible for the behaviour of those guests. However, room 1280 was extremely tired and in bad need of an overhaul. And given the amount of things that were wrong with it, it certainly doesn't come anywhere near the level that Sandals proclaims to be. And this guys is room 708, our home for the next two nights and therefore the last two nights of Moby, seven nights in the making. And after all that, we're now in 708, which is just the dyslexic version of the room we have for the first 11 nights. Uh, air conditioning, take you outside the minute. Down the corridor to the bathroom. Exactly what we had before. There's towels, there's everything, perfect. But uh, we'll test all the USBs and stuff. Fiona's already unpacking. How cool she is. And then, got a hot tub, get something to hang our clothes. And this guy's, I'm gonna go and do a time lapse now. And the sun is setting, uh, we're a bit higher, which is gonna be, hopefully make this time lapse really nice. We're on the third floor of the same block that we're at, so our room would have just been below us last time for the first 11 nights. It's more modern, RFID access to the room, Ah, it's an awful lot better. We've only got two nights left, but it's going to make our last couple of days here in the resort a lot more pleasurable. Right, time last time. Guys, it is Tuesday and our last full day here at Sandals Montego Bay and I thought this was going to be a great opportunity to sit down on one of the comfy benches here on the Latitude Pier and talk you through the good, the bad and the ugly regarding the Sandals Resort in Northern Jamaica. Right guys, you'll be glad to hear I'm not going to recover the good, the bad and the ugly from the Sandals Montego Bay. If you want to look at that segment, you need to go back to video number 202 and my comprehensive and complete resort and room tour. But back to Tuesday morning, I was heading back to the room to see if my gorgeous wife had managed to get out of bed. And here I am walking past that old tired room block, which we spent some Monday night in. Obviously yesterday being Monday we moved to room 708, a much better room and Fiona and I had a really lovely sleep last night. After all that running and therefore that effort, I was delighted to see that Fiona was up and about. And with her being on her iPad, it probably meant she was on Facebook. Really 
It is of course Tuesday afternoon and the reggae band are back. This of course is the same reggae band that Fiona sang with last Tuesday right here at the Sandals Montego Bay. However this week their music was less mainstream but they were still awesome and we listened to their entire set. Tuesday night was also Fiona's and my last night here at the Sandals Montego Bay so we booked in to Butch's for our last supper. And before I take you to the highlight of Fiona's and my last night at Sandals Montego Bay which is of course karaoke at the Cricketers I'm going to share some photographs that I took throughout the day. Before I get into the karaoke night here at the Cricketers on site at Sandals Montego Bay, I want to state that the pub is a very dark place. You will have seen that throughout my video series here on YouTube, but I'm afraid it was even darker tonight, so my little iPhone 12 really struggled. And in November this year, that is of course 2022, Fiona and I will have been married 21 years. And guys, I'm being completely open and honest with you here because I have never seen Fiona take part in karaoke before, so this was a new one for me and I was really proud of her. Guys, I've got absolutely no idea if this is going to break YouTube copyright rules or not, but I'm going to try to give you Fiona's second song, which she sang in honour of her awesome friends Michael and Donna, who made it back safely to Glasgow yesterday from the Sandals Montego Bay after a fantastic 14 nights at this great resort. Fiona, come on! Fiona! And of course, Michael and Donna are simply the best and we're so looking forward 
to sharing our Virgin New Yorkers trip, which should be coming here on YouTube in only a few weeks time. So back to the cricketers and Tuesday night, which of course is our last night here at Sandals Montego Bay in July 2022. Fiona and I met some awesome new friends on that Tuesday night and thanks to all of them for making Tuesday night and our last night so memorable. And a massive thank you to the awesome, fantastic entertainment team on site here at Sandals Montego Bay. You guys are incredible. <laughs> It is Wednesday morning, day 15 of Moby, seven nights in the making. That means our 14 nights are over. What does that mean you're doing, Fiona? Packing up again. Packing again. But what the guys in Saddles are gonna do is they're gonna move us to another room today, which means we don't have a late, our, our flight tonight is at about 8.10, but looking at Flight Radar 24, it hadn't even left London an hour after it should have, so I'm not convinced it's going to leave on time tonight. But hey ho, that is travelling in 2022. So we're packed up, we're going to move to another room after breakfast, and then we're going to relax by the pool for the vast majority of today before leaving the resort sometime after 5pm for our journey back. 24 hours journey back. I'll come back to that a little bit later on the video because our two hour transfer at London Heathrow has now become an eight hour transfer at London Heathrow. So the pressure's off in one hand, but it's gonna be a long, boring day tomorrow uh, in Terminal 5. <laughs> but we'll come back to that later. That at least from club. Yeah, we're going to the lounge, we'll go to the lounge. We're travelling Club Europe. Um, well, you know, the price BA charged me, I think it was buying the aeroplane. But um, we'll get the towels here, we'll go down to the pool after breakfast and enjoy our last day in Montego Bay. Let's have a look outside first. Look at that. I mean, I am never going to get tired of this view. But sadly, this is the last day. Okay, it's breakfast. So a massive thank you to Christopher from Guest Services, one of the managers here on site at Sandals Montego Bay, for providing us with this room for the day. As I said in the last video, Sandals have this one-size-fits-all checkout policy of 11 a.m. And while that may be a perfectly good policy for the vast majority of North American customers who've got a flight around lunchtime or even early afternoon, with the two to three hour check-in, an 11 a.m. checkout is absolutely fine. But for us Europeans, our flights tend to leave late in the evening and they're overnight. So an 11am checkout simply adds more cost and inconvenience. Sandals at the Montego Bay do try to offer you a room extension for 50 US dollars. But thanks to Christopher and the management team here at Sandals Montego Bay, we were gifted this room for the day, which is really appreciated. Thank you, Sandals. Right guys, for room 1009 here, which is our room for the last day here at Sandals Montego Bay, I'm going to take you down to the pool, around the back of the resort, as I try to find Fiona, who's by now sunbathing in the usual spot by the main pool. So let's go. I really do love the Crystal Lagoon room block at the Sandals Montego Bay. However, I do think if Fiona and I had been staying there, we'd have chosen to laze by the Crystal Lagoon pool itself, or even better, we'd have chosen one of the walkout rooms. The walk to our usual sunbathing spot by the main pool was certainly a lot longer than our usual walk from room 607 or 708, where we spent the majority of Moby 70 nights in the making. Cheers. It's the last drinks at Sandals 2022. Last lunch drink. Last drunk drink? Lunch drink. Lunch drink. 
plus Cheers. So what's Fifi going for today? Back to normal. Is it? Vanilla. Is this going vanilla? It's going vanilla. Is vanilla the best? No. Is that for a nice cream? Time to go back to the room. Get showered, changed, and check out. Our pickup time from the Sandals Montego Bay was somewhere between 5 and 5.15 p.m. As a result, Fiona and I headed back to the room around 3.30 and gave us plenty of time to get ready for our long journey back to the UK. Just like Donald Michaels three days ago, it's our turn to be here. Our turn to be gone. So despite an hour's notice, the bellhop never turned up. So Fiona and I had to bring our bags all the way down to reception ourselves. Not great five-star service. So the weird thing is, on Sunday, the sandals were desperate to get rid of us. <laughs> Yet on the day we're supposed to go home, we have to bring our own cases down because the bellhop doesn't arrive. They have no clue where we're staying, and I'm not even sure they've got any clue that we're going back to the airport. But hey, you're in the Caribbean, you're on island time. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yep, guys, on Sunday when Don and Michael were leaving, Sandals were expecting Fiona and I to leave as well. But on the day we're supposed to leave, Sandals don't seem to have any clue that we're leaving. And then finally, the big bus arrives to take Fiona and I all the way across the runway to Sangster Airport. I think from memory there was only one other couple on this bus to the airport this afternoon. I'm going to make the assumption that they boarded from the Sandals Royal Caribbean before the bus made the short journey to pick us up at the Sandals Montego Bay. Either way we were now en route to Montego Bay International Airport a whole 10 minutes away. Yes guys, the transfer from the Sandals Montego Bay to Sangster International Airport is only about 10 minutes. But this journey is still beaten if you visit the Sandals Lazores Grenada because the commute from the airport to the hotel or back again is less than 4 minutes. And seriously guys, that's in traffic. Anyway, back to today, you can see Fiona and I were arriving at Montego Bay's International Airport, ready to check in for our Virgin Atlantic flight back to London Heathrow. The wearing of face coverings was certainly optional when Fiona and I visited Montego Bay International Airport during July 2022. However, we had to sanitise our hands as we entered the airport terminal. And straight through the door was the Virgin Atlantic check-in area, where we made our way directly to the premium economy check-in line. I want to state now is Fiona and I experienced one of the smoothest and easiest check-in processes that I think we've ever had or certainly in the last number of years anyway. There were plenty of check-in desks open, there was plenty of staff and the lines were very quiet and all of this despite our flight being nearly full. So a massive well done to Virgin Atlantic Airways and the authorities here at Montego Bay International Airport. Great job guys. And as you can imagine guys I don't want to film the security clearance process. <laughs> 
Again, this was very easy. There were no queues whatsoever and there were plenty of screening lines open. Meaning Fiona and I were airside and duty free in less than 10 minutes. And I want to remind you guys, this is July 2022. It was now around 6 p.m. So Fiona and I decided to go to Wendy's for a burger ahead of our flight. Probably the most expensive Wendy's I've ever bought at nearly 30 US dollars for two meal deals. But on the plus side, we got an awesome view of the apron. You know, guys, this isn't a bad airport at all. And despite there being a complete lack of seating in the food hall, it was clean and fairly easy to navigate. And what's that I've just spotted in the distance? Is that the Jamaican bobsleigh from the movie Cool Running? I guess like 90% of the world's airports, you're forced to walk through the duty-free shops on the way to your departure gate. But here in Montego Bay, it seems to be completely closed. Very weird. <music> And there's hope guys because here comes our cabin crew for tonight's flight to London. And here we are approaching the gate area. We wouldn't be spending that long here guys, just under an hour if my memory serves me right. For those lucky enough to be traveling in Virgin Upper Class, of course there is a lounge for you to access here at Montego Bay Airport. Michael and Donna used it on a Sunday night and they said it was pretty good. But as I said, our stay here at the gate area wasn't very long at all. Virgin called those requiring extra time to board first, then they called the passengers in Upper Class class and then their premium economy passengers which of course included Fiona and I. And once again the process here at Montego Bay International Airport was very smooth, it was very organised and the staff were very friendly. As we boarded the aircraft, we had a very warm welcome by the onboard Virgin Atlantic crew. And as you can see, we had exactly the same seats on the way home as we had on the way out two weeks ago. And as we got comfortable for the 8-hour flight back to London Heathrow, we even got a pre-departure beverage. As I've said many times before, filming at night is a vlogger's nightmare. So for the departure, I'm going to switch over to the iPhone, but I'm not going to promise you anything that exciting here, guys, as we depart Sangster International Airport, Montego Bay. <laughs> I did say that trying to take a video out an aircraft window at night was a vlogger's nightmare. So for her meal tonight, Fiona chose the teriyaki chicken. And she did say it was pretty good. And as for me, I chose the vegetarian pasta option. No, it wasn't that great, to be honest, guys. So the rigatoni was pretty awful. Fiona's eating hers. I'm having my dessert. It's like a cheesecake thing. It's like an American cheesecake with a sponge. Some sort of, I'm assuming raspberry coolie. It's, it's, it's all right. I think, the, I think the food was better. Right guys, I think I'm gonna give up here for Thursday night. Filming under this LED ambient light on board the Boeing Dreamliner is not making for great video. It should get a lot better tomorrow morning when we're landing during daylight hours. Breakfast. We had choy 
choice was a cheese and cheese and tomato. No, it was a cheese and chutney croissant. Cheese and chutney tomato type croissant or a bacon roll. You get a yogurt and you get a fruit plate. Choice of orange juice, tea or coffee. I had a uh, few just said orange juice. And I have uh, orange juice and I have coffee and a yogurt. I'm going to give you daylight in a second or two guys but this is one of the most frustrating things about flying in the Boeing Dreamliner is that the crew have the ability to lock the electronic dimming window shades into dark mode and that was a pretty great little breakfast on board Virgin Atlantic in premium economy and here you go guys by the power of video we're back in daylight and making our initial descent into London Heathrow International Airport at the colour of the grass guys this is not the United Kingdom that I've known all my life only a few days ago it hit 40 degrees Celsius here in London that is 104 degrees Fahrenheit according to Google conversion it also broke all known records for weather here in the United Kingdom it's not right guys there's something very strange with the world right now <music> During my entire life guys I don't think I've ever seen grass this yellow before here in the United Kingdom and it's certainly not a good sign of things to come. As most of you are probably aware, Virgin Atlantic Airways uses Terminal 3 here at London Heathrow Airport. It was around 10am when we landed and our flight to Glasgow wasn't due to leave until 9pm tonight, so in 11 hours time, and that was going to be from Terminal 5. Quite often flights arriving here in the United Kingdom from Jamaica are subject to a certain amount of additional scrutiny. Add that to the post-pandemic challenges that we're facing here at London Heathrow and we were expecting some delays this morning on our arrival. <laughs> And all that was a pretty good flight on board Virgin Atlantic in their premium economy cabin. The flight left on time and arrived on time. What more can you ask for? And yeah, the cabin crew were fantastic. So well done to Virgin Atlantic for another incredible flight. Guys, I obviously can't film it, but as Fiona and I were walking up the jetway into the terminal, the UK border agency were there. They were clearly looking for someone. And this was going to cause us more delays down the line. I also couldn't film the baggage reclaim process because the UK border agency had clearly got an operation focused on our arriving aircraft. It took about one hour for our bags to finally arrive on the carousel belt. This was nothing to do with ongoing staffing challenges at London Heathrow Terminal 3. It was nothing to do with Virgin Atlantic either. It was clear that every single bag coming off our aircraft was going through additional screening this morning. In the more than three decades that I've been using this airport on a fairly regular basis, I can honestly tell you guys that Heathrow has never been known for its fast baggage reclaim process. So with Fiona and I procuring our free tickets on board the Heathrow Express, we were heading to the platform now for the short transfer across to Terminal 5.
when you're transferring from Heathrow Central like we were to Terminal 5 you do need to be a little bit aware because some of the trains go to Terminal 4 and some of them go to Terminal 5. The first train went to Terminal 4 and the train that Fiona and I were now on goes to Terminal 5 only. And if you're transferring between Heathrow terminals on a through ticket there is a dedicated flight connection centre in all of Heathrow's terminals. And that means you would be bussed between terminals airside. But unfortunately, Fiona and I were not on a through ticket. We flew Virgin Atlantic from Montego Bay to Heathrow, and now we were flying British Airways on a completely separate ticket up to Glasgow. This meant we had to fully land at T3, collect our bags, and go through customs and immigration before exiting the terminal ground side and transferring over to Terminal 5 using the Heathrow Express, which is completely free for transferring passengers. And this guys is where Fiona's and my Thursday nightmare began. We arrived in Terminal 5 which is known as T5 and this is the home of British Airways here at London Heathrow. The only way to describe T5 this morning it was completely chaotic. If you go back to video number 200 from a few weeks ago you will have followed Fiona and I through the check-in and the departure process at London Heathrow T3 on board our Virgin Atlantic flight across to Montego Bay. And as I described in that very episode, T3 was also extremely chaotic, but for different reasons. The entire check-in baggage belt system had broken down in T3 that morning. However, every check-in desk was manned here in Terminal 3 two weeks ago. Virgin Atlantic had staff at every check-in point. And if you'd watched that video, you will know that I didn't hold Virgin Atlantic responsible for any of the chaos or delays during check-in that morning. But back to Thursday and T5 it's a completely different picture altogether guys because the chaos and mayhem here at T5 check-in this morning is a purely down to the incompetence of BA management during the pandemic as you can see we've printed out our boarding passes at one of the electronic kiosks so we're now heading to bag drop and the queue that we're now in is for Club Europe and Club World passengers only. So that is passengers traveling in business class. I really do feel sorry for those traveling in economy today because their line must be over double this. Right guys, I'm gonna break into this video for a few minutes and do something that I've never done on the channel before and I'm gonna get a little bit political, so sorry in advance. Those of you not from the United Kingdom watching this video are probably not aware, but the UK government had one of the most generous furlough schemes during the COVID-19 pandemic. The bottom line was companies like British Airways, British Airports Authority, in fact any private or public sector organization that were having to send staff home or non-essential staff home due to the pandemic, the government were funding their salaries up to the level of 80%. The bottom line guys, this government backed furlough scheme was a pretty sweet deal for both employers and employees and certainly those employers that used the scheme correctly because the idea was that nobody was getting laid off, nobody was being put on, an, on unemployment even and what would happen at the end of the pandemic employers would just get their staff back off furlough and they would carry on as usual and for employees sent home it wasn't that bad a deal because what you've got to remember guys is there was no non-essential shops open there was no pubs open there was no restaurants open you couldn't travel anywhere so actually 80 percent was a pretty sweet deal when you were stuck at home and you were not spending your money on anything else anyway but unfortunately companies like british airways and british airports authority thought that they could get one over on their employees. What they were doing is laying off far too many staff, putting them onto unemployment, and those staff were doing what any other human being would do, is they went off and got another job. And when you're in a jobs market that absolutely favors the employee right now, they had no problem going out there and finding new jobs, and in fact, probably better jobs with better T's and C's, and certainly probably working better hours than they would have to work if they were working at an airport. So when you watch the news here in the UK and you see British Airways and British Airports Authority management crying about the lack of staff and it's everyone else's fault but their own, the only people those companies can blame is their own management. All of the BAA and BA staff that we met throughout the check-in process, 
the security process, the lounge process, the boarding process, the in-flight experience were all excellent. They were awesome, they were friendly, they did their job as professionally as you would expect them to. But unfortunately, those staff who are left are being let down by appallingly poor judgment and management of those businesses during the pandemic. But let's be clear guys, this is only my opinion as a traveling passenger, as a customer of British Airways and British Airports Authority when Fiona and I traveled through T5 that Thursday back in July 2022. All in all, from picking up those boarding passes from the automated kiosk to going through the bag drop process and then fast track security took Fiona and I nearly four and a half hours. Without a doubt, guys, it was the worst traveling experience of my entire life. I think we all understand and accept the need for airport security. So when we rejoin the video here, we're gonna rejoin Fiona and I as we're leaving the fast track security area en route to the lounge. We're not very happy campers at this point uh, as we head towards the British Airways Terrace at the south side of Terminal 5. T5 was a very busy airside, but to be quite honest, guys, I think I've seen it worse during what would be known as normal times. What we have to remember it is July and during the peak holiday season here in the United Kingdom. I spent all afternoon and most of Thursday evening in the BA Terrace Lounge, or should I say the BA South Terrace Lounge at T5. We were both tired, fed up and just wanted to get back to Glasgow and our own bed. So I hope you understand we took absolutely no video content while in the lounge that Thursday. So it is now just after 8 p.m. and we're walking towards the domestic A gates where we're hoping to catch our flight on time up to Glasgow. And because we're flying at British Airways, you know guys, that's never gonna happen. finally arrived at the gate we realized that we'd picked up yet another delay if nine hours wasn't bad enough we now had at least another one hour delay and if you guessed that british airways had no cabin crew to operate the aircraft you would be absolutely correct <laughs> So you can imagine the excitement when Fiona and I finally had the opportunity to board the aircraft. Maybe it was just sheer exhaustion. And because we were booked in Club Europe, we got the opportunity to board first. We were in boarding group one. On top of the outrageous amount of money that British Airways charged me for this return flight between Glasgow and London Heathrow, I had paid another £16 each, £32 in total to reserve seats in the Club Europe cabin. Yes guys, I know, even in business class, British Airways charge you to reserve seats. Even in premium economy on our Virgin Atlantic sectors or even on board Delta earlier this year, we didn't have to pay to reserve seats. And of course, in any other country than the UK, you would have come competition because if you want to fly between Glasgow and London Heathrow you have no choice guys it's British Airways, British Airways or British Airways. Biscuit because the food was just gunk. 
It was prawns or Moroccan salad with aubergines and shite. I know, guys, I'm just continuously moaning here about British Airways, but honestly, it was absolutely terrible. Given that I paid nearly £600 each for this return flight, the choice to eat in business class tonight was again some sort of fish dish or some sort of horrible salad dish. It was exactly the same on the way down to Heathrow two weeks earlier. So I'm going to say the same about this Club Europe service on board British Airways as I did two weeks ago. BA have got absolutely no clue what people really eat these days. Whoever designed their service on board BA in the Club Europe cabin really should be seeking employment elsewhere. Anyway, you're going to be really glad to hear that I'm going to shut up for a while as we're descending over Ayrshire and about to turn right onto finals into runway 05 at Glasgow. And with the White Lees wind farm just below us, you're probably wondering why it is lighter here in Glasgow than it was when we departed London. Well, there's two reasons. The first is, well, it is just lighter 400 miles further north than London at this time in July but I've also moved across to using my iPhone rather than the GoPro which is a lot better in lower light. say this again because the British Airways staff we encountered during this trip were absolutely excellent. They were without a doubt the heroes of the day. It's not their fault that the product they're working with is complete garbage and then they've got to come to work every day and be abused by passengers who don't understand that these heroes are just trying to do a job in some pretty miserable circumstances made by their management. Welcome to Glasgow International Airport where Moby Seven Nights and the Making began just over two weeks earlier. And of course Glasgow International Airport is also owned by BAA, British Airports Authority, the same as Heathrow. So we weren't expecting the arrival process to be that much better than when we departed London Heathrow just over an hour earlier. It took well over 40 minutes for our bags to arrive on the baggage reclaim carousel. And of course all of the bags marked priority came off last. So with Fiona in in charge of getting us home from Glasgow Airport, the last insult from a pretty horrible day hit us as we exited the car park. Due to British Airways incompetence, flight cancellations and even more flight delays, British car parks fined us nearly £35 for overstaying. So as you can imagine guys, both Fiona and I were completely done with this journey today. We're on the M8, heading towards Glasgow. It's 17 degrees and it's 2 minutes to 11. 2 minutes 11, 17 degrees, and we're back in Glasgow. So that's a wrap for Moby. 17 days in the making. Done. Over that's all and right, out. <laughs> 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 Right guys, that was the last episode in our Moby 70 Nights in the Making adventure. Not a great end to what was a very good trip indeed. As you can see, the weather did break a couple of weeks ago and we're back to normal here in Scotland. The grass has even started to look green once again. But as I record this close to the Moby 70 Nights in the Making adventure, there are hosepipe bands in the south of England and you can completely understand that when you saw the colour of the grass on that final approach to London Heathrow in the last episode. The next series coming in the channel will be our Virgin New Yorkers trip. I will do an introductory video to that 
very shortly here on YouTube. But for now, we hope you've enjoyed Moby Cine Nights in the making. So until the next video, guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon to be notified when our next video is published. Thank you very much for watching.